hi, welcome to Science and Stuff, the show where we talk about science and stuff. I'm Anna Winger, the showrunner of Mission Unstoppable, everyone's favorite TV show about the amazing leaders working in science, technology, engineering, and math. You can catch Mission Unstoppable Saturday mornings on CBS. I have two incredible guests today. You're going to love them both. The first is Emily Pilliton. She is a um, she's an amazing builder. And right after Emily, we'll talk to Bat expert Kristen Lear. Seriously, she has her PhD. And now it's time for... Oh, my friends, my friends. Today I have more great news for you regarding Australia's biodiversity. Earlier this month on Science and Stuff, we talked about the new reef discovery in the Great Barrier Reef. And now, new marsupials. Ever heard of a glider? So the most popular glider is probably a sugar glider. But today we're talking about greater gliders. Greater gliders live on Australia's east coast. And if you try to spot one in the wild, get ready to stay up late because they are nocturnal. About the size of a cat, they glide from tree to tree using a membrane that stretches from their elbows to their knees. They can glide up to 100 meters and make 90 degree pivots mid-air. That is crazy. It's like a flying cat. Greater gliders are scientifically known as Peteroids volans. They are the largest gliders in Australia and have been known to vary in size and color. Here are pictures of the gliders. Oh, they're so cute. And here is a picture of another of the world's cutest animals, my cat Yolandi. So you can compare for size. She is adorable. Okay, back to the gliders. Once all classified as Peteroids volans, there are now two new species, Peteroids minor and Peteroids armillatus. Peteroids minor is the smallest and lightest in color and Peteroids armillatus is in the middle in size and color. This discovery is especially exciting for Australia right now because sadly the continent has the highest rate of species lot lost on the planet. Over the past decade, three different species from Australia have gone extinct. That is so sad. The Christmas Island Forest Skink, the Christmas Island Pipistrel, and the Bramble K. Malomus all extinct now. The extinction is due to climate change, forest fires, habitat loss, and logging. So please, no more. Let's do everything we can to save the gliders, all of them. Our next news story travels faster than I can say science newsy news that can impress your friends that you can't stop thinking about even if you wanted to. We're talking about high-speed travel. Not in planes, not in trains, but in pods. One of the companies trying to turn this vision into a reality is Virgin Hyperloop. Virgin Hyperloop gave its first test ride with passengers this month, taking place at their test facility outside Las Vegas. The Virgin Hyperloop is a system that will carry passengers between major cities in pods, traveling at speeds of up to 600 miles per hour. That's like faster as fast as a plane or faster than a plane. It's, it's really super fast. And they're doing this using physics. Virgin's high, Virgin's high speed system uses magnetic levitation. Opposing magnets lift the pods above the track and series of and a series of magnets along the track push and pull the pod until it reaches its final destination. Each individual pod will hold 25 to 30 passengers and once the project is up and running, Virgin hopes to have thousands of pods running at all hours. The key advantage to Hyperloop travel, rather than airline travel, is energy consumption. The Hyperloop uses only a fraction of the energy that a commercial airline does, providing a much more sustainable way to travel. The test in Las Vegas carried two passengers on a 500-meter track, reaching a speed of only 100 miles per hour. Okay, well, I mean, didn't Virgin say that they were going to go 600 miles per hour? Yes, they are still promising this speed, but they say their test track was too short for the pod to reach anything higher than 100 miles per hour. We will keep you posted if they get any faster. Next phase of the project is a six mile test track beginning construction soon in West Virginia. Virgin says the Hyperloop could be certified by 2026. That's really soon and ready for public transportation by the end of the decade. Would you travel in the Virgin Hyperloop pod? I absolutely would. Um, all right. Our third story of today. It's around that time of year that many of us see flocks of majestic 
geese flying south for the winter. This is something we all know about, but have you ever stopped to wonder how do geese know which way is south? Well, the answer may blow your mind. Geese can detect the magnetic field of the earth. That's right. Geese can detect the magnetic field of the earth, which allows them to tell north from south. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They can tell the North Pole from the South Pole. Um, next, next slide, please. This ability to see the magnetic fields is called magnetoreception. There's magneto at reception. Isn't that funny? Magnetoreception. It involves a special protein in the eye that is sensitive to blue light. There are all sorts of wavelengths of light, but blue wavelengths of light are attracted to the Earth's magnetic poles. So because the geese have this special protein in their eyes to see blue photons, their vision could look something like this. You can see in the north one, the arc, you know, basically points to the center. We reached out to a local goose to comment and are currently awaiting reply from his rep. We have not heard anything back. I don't know why blue light is attracted to the North and South Poles. That's something we're going to try and figure out for you um, next week. Um, also, why do geese fly in a V formation? Well, this is an energy saving technique called vortex surfing. It allows birds to trail each other, flying in each other's forward moving air. The only goose that doesn't have this advantage is the, the most forward flying goose. The physics of vortex surfing was adopted by fighter jets. It is why they too fly in a V-shaped formation. It saves fuel. Also known to use this physics theory, more all-seeing than the mighty goose and far more powerful than fighter jets. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyonce Knowles. That's right. Always in formation. Ugh, I could watch that forever. And that is it for... Our first guest today is Girls Garage founder and expert builder Emily Pilaton. Here is a clip of Emily from the show. Oh, hi, Emily. She's there. We're going to play back a clip from your show so everybody gets an intro for you. I founded a nonprofit and I've been doing that work ever since. That's the way that I fell in love with architecture and building and also the way I came to understand who I am as a person and I think every young person deserves to have experiences like that. Emily created a place called Girls Garage in Berkeley, California, where she's teaching young girls to build confidence in themselves through engineering and math. Let's build. There we go. Emily Pilleton, here she is. She's a designer, educator, and builder. She's the founder of Girls Garage, based in Berkeley, California, which is a nonprofit building program for girls ages 9 to 18. She's taught thousands of girls how to use power tools, reminding our communities that women belong in architecture and construction. Welcome, Emily. How's Oh, you've seen her on the TED stage. Your bio is so long because there's so many things to say about you. You've seen her on the TED stage, the Colbert Rapport, and, of course, Mission Unstoppable. She's with us now. Welcome, Emily. Hi, how's it going? So, hi. So, tell us, tell, tell everyone out there in TV land how you became interested in building things. Wow. Well, I think that as a child, I was one of those kids that was just always taking something apart, um, putting things together. I was always into something. I had two younger sisters, and we spent a lot of our young years um, building tree houses and forts and all the fun hands-on stuff. And so I think it wasn't until I was a teenager when I realized that that type of learning and that type of hands-on activity was actually a way of being in the world and that it was a career I could pursue also. And right. um, when I was a teenager specifically, I had the opportunity to travel to Central America and work on um, a construction site. I was 16 years old and alongside some local volunteers and carpenters and masons, we built an entire town park. I think that was the experience for me that solidified the idea that building, even as a, a young woman of color, that this could be a way for me to to have a lifetime of learning and contributing something to my community and um, feeling powerful. That is so cool. I can imagine it would feel very powerful to be able to build things like shelter, you know, and one of the fundamental needs, you know. That's awesome. And so what's new at Girls Garage? Tell us what you got going on these days up there. So I'm here at Girls Garage right now. This behind me is our giant tool wall, oh, and wall. I'm looking out into our wood shop space. So 
um, imagine uh, there's a chop saw over there. There's a table saw over here. Um, and this is a physical space that girls ages nine to 18 um, come to that they can take after school, summer and weekend classes here. All of our teen girls attend for free. And what we're up to these days is um, we're actually in between sessions right now. But when we return in the new year, we're taking on a whole bunch of new projects. So we love to do projects that are in service of our community. Um, we built a giant chicken pavilion. Chicken coop feels like the wrong word. Um, so we it's built so a 500 big. square foot. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's gigantic. Um, we built a chicken pavilion for an urban farm. We've built sandboxes for local preschools. We built a parklet bench around the corner. Um, we like to think about how we can use carpentry, welding, and activist art to engage with and serve um, the community that we all identify with. That's awesome. I love those parklet benches too. Like they just remind you like, oh, even though you're in the middle of a city, remember you can sit down and enjoy your surroundings. I love that. And it must be fun for them to see the stuff that they built like just literally in their neighborhood, you know, around town. That's got to be really fun. Um, yeah, so that's right. You, you were talking about, uh, you, you said that I, I asked you, I was like, what are the top five tools that every girl should have? And you said that you would, you would tell us. Ooh, I've been waiting for this. Only five, though. I don't know how I, know. I can ever pick five. I'm going to write it down because I'm, I'm getting them. Oh, okay. Well, if I could only have 25, I, I'm <laughs> sitting next to a giant toolbox that is our mm -hmm. curated list of must-have tools, and there's more than five in them. But Okay, there's um, more I than five must-have, but my top, these are just the top yes. five. Okay. Yes. I think it also depends whether you'd identify as a fixer or a builder because they mm. require different types of tools. But um, I would say must-haves. Um, are a hammer, a 16 ounce claw hammer specifically, okay. uh, will work great for both construction and also deconstruction. If you need to take nails or screws out of, um, perhaps there's something in your house that or there's something sticking out, you can use it to remove yeah. hardware. I would say a drill and driver, a drill and an impact driver combo set. Maybe that counts as two, um, but it's no, important to it's, have both. If it's one thing, then that's fine. Drill and driver yes. combo set. Okay, got it. Um, I would say definitely. A, oh, I happen to have one. Okay, so <laughs> most people have most people have a drill at their house, uh -huh. which has a um, drills are, oh, a are better served. Like it's got the yeah. Well, Sorry, go ahead. Please hold. Because it's got the driver bits as well as the drill bits. Yeah. So this is the drill. Yes. And this is a driver. Yes, got it. So the drill is really optimized for drilling holes, and an impact driver is optimized mm -hmm. for installing screws. Most people will cheat and use a driver to install screws, but it's not ideal. It can hurt your arm, and it doesn't regulate its own torque in a way, and it okay. can stri strip your screw heads. So I've drill an impact driver. Impact driver. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I would say a 25-foot tape measure. That's a good length where you can measure small things and also the length of an entire room. Yes. Um, a speed square, which is actually a triangular shape. I will show you. It looks like this. This is a, a tool. Speed square. Look at that. I'm a, look at so that. this is actually a triangle. quite speed useful. Triangle. It is a triangle, <laughs> but it helps you make sure that things are square. Are square. So, Got it. Yes. It's great for checking corners. You can also use it to draw parallel lines. Um, what nice. is that, four? Yeah. That's four. Maybe the fourth one would be some form of um, adjustable pliers that you can use for grabbing things. I need And you those. can use it as a as a wrench in a pinch. I need that. I need a wrench, too. We're going we're gonna to do bonus number six as a wrench. Okay. There you go. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Well, all of that sounds awesome. I'm very excited. Um, okay, so now it's time for the game that we play with all, I know, everybody's like, I want to be in Girls Garage. I know, everybody on Twitch wants to be in Girls Garage, just FYI. How old do you have to be? Under 18? 9 to 18, technically, but, you know, you can always drop me a note and maybe pop by or follow us. I, I you think could totally do adult-like but... building camp, I bet you. And yes, like, we have. We actually used to, and it was quite fun. Yes, people would love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, but now it's time for us for the stuff part of Science and Stuff, where we play a game. So uh, every, time, every time one of our guests is on the show, 
We play a game called I Know Everything About. Each of our guests are experts at something, so we create a game especially for each of you. Emily, the title of your game is I Know Everything About Tools. Ta-da! By playing, you'll get a chance to reach the top of our prestigious science and stuff leaderboard. Um, have to have it. They want you to destroy something. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, look at this leaderboard. It is Ooh. it is so well made. Uh, I mean, look at the spacing. We've got somebody at two point five, which is above two. So somebody doesn't understand math. And um, but you know, let's see if we can get you that top spot. Let's see if we can get you that top spot. We're going to play you ten different sounds that different tools make, and you'll guess what sound it is by choosing from this list of tools. Just in case you can't totally see what they are. The one on the top left is a power palm sander. Then it's a power saw, staple gun, belt grinder, nail gun, power planer, power drill, tape measure, shop vac, and a hammer. Got it. Make sense to you? Great. Yeah. Great, great. Okay, so here comes sound number one. Oh. That's the hammer. That's the hammer. Ding, 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 ding. Correct. Great. All right. She got it. <laughs> I love it. Let's just listen to the hammer for that. Anyway. Okay. Number two. Number two. Here we go. I mean, that could be. I be. think that's the circular saw, the skill saw. I think it was the circular saw too, but they're telling me it's a that that is the belt grinder. Does that sound like it could be a belt grinder mm. to you? We may have to. You know, you I know don't what? actually. Go ahead. That tool, I have a belt sander, but I don't use a belt grinder. So what's a belt grinder? I think that's more for metal work. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, but that's okay. It. I didn't get it. All that's right. fine. <laughs> no, <laughs> next one. Next one. Oh, that's the tape measure. Tape measure. There you go. Um, all right. Can you hear that one? That. Hmm. I would say that. Do it one more time. One more time. Okay. I think that's the circular saw. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. That's a power drill. I, I don't. I that was I, not a power drill. That I don't think so. Yeah, I think like. we might have got it mixed up. I think you know if what? That's I'm a drill. Think it, it needs to be repaired. Uh, that is a seriously, drill. it sounds like it's falling apart. <laughs> um, all right, next one. <laughs> okay, that's the sander. That's the sander. Yes, correct. Woo! Next. That is the staple gun. Staple gun, excellent. That would be the nail gun. Um, yes, exactly. I just looked down at the, the thing and somebody for the belt sander said flock of bees. Um, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> flock of bees and a hair dryer was another guess. Um, here we go, ah. next sound. I don't even know what number we're on. Okay. I, so, so what you have left, you have a power planer I, left. You have the so, power saw I think that's left. The that's the planer, correct. I think All some right. of these tools need uh, sh need their blades sharpened. I agree. <laughs> Sounds like they're <laughs> okay. Next. Well, that's that's a shop back. That's the shot back for sure, which means the last one. Go ahead and play it. There's your circular saw. There's your circular saw. Which very, actually, very good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yes, very, very good. You made it onto our very prestigious leaderboard. Woo! Thank you so much for playing. Tell everybody where we can follow you on social media. So you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Girls Garage, or you can go to our website, which is girlsgarage.org. And we have a 
campaign running right now that I'm just going to shout out called the Fearless yes. 100. And we're raising some funds to try to equip 100 girls of our attending girls who are all teenagers um, nice. with a full set of, of tools, a full toolbox that they can use for life. That is so cool and such an important thing to have. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. And wait, plug it one more time. Where do people, people go to um, learn about this? If you go to girlsgarage.org, there's a ton of info about our programs. And right there on the homepage, there's some info about the Fearless 100. There it is. Check out girlsgarage.org. And our awesome friend, Emily Peloton, thank you so much. See you next time. Thank Bye, you. Emily. Bye. See you. Bye. Uh, my favorite one was on the staple gun. Uh, somebody uh, said that that was clapping for the sound. So see power tools. Um, okay, next up, our next guest is Kristen Lear. Let's take a peek at Kristen's segment on Mission Unstoppable before we dive in. Today I'm meeting bat conservationist Kristen Lear at her bat cave, uh, the University of Georgia. She's gonna shed some light on these mysterious creatures of the night. So, why do you think bats are misunderstood? They get this bad rap in the media, in movies, we see bats in scary scenes. But I think it's really unfair. We can see these are the same exact bat. This one has its teeth bared, which is often how you see bats in the media. You see them with their teeth out, but usually they're not like that. They're usually like that because they're afraid. And this one, same exact bat, but it looks cute. Look how cute it looks. Yeah, look at its big old ears. Yep. So there's really nothing to be afraid of when this is how they normally are. You guys, seriously, search the web for cute bats. They are actually beyond adorbs. We Kristen Lear is obsessed with bats, so much so, so that she's been dedicated to saving them since she was in the sixth grade. Kristen is joining us from Fort Collins, Colorado, where she is a bat biologist and conservationist. Hi, Kristen, how you doing? So I know what a biologist is, and I know what a conservationist is, but what does a day in the life of a bat biologist and conservationist look like? Uh, I must say it's probably, it's the best job in the world. Obviously, I'm a little biased, yes. but um, basically, you know, we get to travel all around the world. We get to see so many different types of bats and study them. Um, so basically, I, I work to study bats and figure out how to protect them. Um, you know, we work a lot with people. Yeah. We get to stay up all night. We get to go crawl into caves. Yeah. I mean, it really, it really is the best job ever. It's, it's awesome. Oh, I love that. And did you hear about that study that they did with the vampire bats in, where was it, Belize, where they learned that they actually did social distance when they got sick? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me because vampire bats are very social so that really does yeah. not surprise me that they're they care about keeping out for their friends, friends. yes yeah. um i think there are over a thousand species of bats in the world is that right um, yeah there's like 1400 some, now tell us some of your faves Just yeah i think we might bats. have some to pull up um but yeah we oh my gosh there's so many around the world there's uh yeah. Oh, this is me. Oh, my oh, gosh. That's, picture, that's when you were building bat houses. <laughs> yes. When you this were a Girl Scout. Into... Yes. Mm -hmm. When I was 12. Mm-hmm. That's so yep. cute. Look at you with your bat yeah. house. My it's first so time happy. building bat houses. Don't take don't take a, a page from my book because those are not the best bat houses. So, <laughs> um, oh, no, I was learning. you build great you ones know. now, yeah. I do, I do. Um, yeah. yeah, that was my first, my first journey. But, yeah, I mean, bats... It's hard for me to pick my favorite one. Um, I think we have some. Ooh, here's yeah, one. this is this is a bulldog bat. Uh, so oh this gosh, is one of my favorites because I'm obsessed. What, can you see what it has in its feet? Look at its little feet. It's got something in its feet. What is it? Is it's it a got, fish? What is that? It's a fish. A bug? Yep. It's a fish. It's a fish. Is it yep, yellow? They actually, yeah, that they're kind of like that is ground. crazy. Wow. Yep. And they, they go That's fishing. That's such a they crazy photo. Yeah, and they, they how actually. How big is that? How big is that? Sorry, I have too many questions. How big is that bat? How big is that fish? So the fish is like a minnow. It's very small. The bat's okay. like I don't know, this big. They're not right. huge bats, but still. But yeah, it's straight still really up awesome. grabbing fish out of the out of the. Um, yeah. That is crazy. Okay, next up, yeah. what do we got? We got more Ooh, Keaton or Kilmer? This is the oh, 
Solid. <laughs> One of our audience <laughs> asked Keaton or Kilmer. Do you have an answer? I would say neither of them, honestly. Ooh, I would say burn. <laughs> she says Christian yeah. Bale. Dan- darn right, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. like. I like. Sorry, Gus's one. fried chicken. It's all about Bale. Sorry. But if you had to pick between um, Keaton or Kilmer, sorry I to harp on it. I don't, I've never actually seen the Keaton one, so I can't tell you. We'll I'm, wait. We'll wait till next time she's on. She'll see it, and then she'll get back to us. Okay, next one. I will sorry, have back to, to give bats. you my opinion. Uh, this is a pallid bat. So this is one that we have here in the U.S. And it has a centipede in its mouth. And I love these bats because pallid bats actually also eat scorpions. Aww. So they pounce on the scorpions and they're immune to the venom of you know, the sting. You're kidding. So, yeah, they can eat them. Um, it's their, I mean, of course they get stung, but they're really pretty cool if they can eat scorpions. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay, awesome. next up. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> The Mexican free-tailed bat. So this, you can Cute. see its little tail sticking out. Yes. Um, and these ones are kind of cool for two reasons. One is that they are the fastest animal flyer in the entire Whoa. world. What? In straight powered, yeah, in straight powered flight. So not in a dive, but in, a, in straight flight. These little bats that are like this big can fly up to 100 miles an hour. That is crazy. Is faster than we drive. Yeah, and they're so small, but they're they have really aerodynamic wings, and wow. they're really able to fly really fast. That's really yep. cool. And they eat a ton of insects too, so they can eat up to their body weight in insects in a night, which is like if we had to eat enough hamburgers, it'd be like six hundred hamburgers. Yeah, yeah, it's impressive. That's crazy. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yep. This one. I know people are like, yeah, this is gross. This is the wrinkle-faced bat. It is. <laughs> wrinkle-faced bat. Whoever warm. named it was very, very creative. Yes. Hey, as bud. you can see, it has the wrinkles. And these ones eat fruit. So we think that they use the wrinkles to help funnel the juice of really, really ripe fruit into their mouth. So they, like, shove their face in the really juicy fruit. And then all that juice funnels into their mouth through their wrinkles. That is fascinating. So Serves a purpose. Me of an orc. Okay, next up. Yeah, I like that. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like if an orc had a bat, that would be its bat. Like a goblin orc <laughs> hybrid. Yes, exactly. The wrinkle face no. <laughs> bat looks like me in the morning. <laughs> me too. <laughs> all right, <laughs> next up. Oh, look Ooh. at that. Yeah. Now, if that last bat was an orc, this is an elf. It is. it is. Yes, this is the spotted bat. We also have this bat here in the U.S., in the western oh western God, part so of the U.S. Cute. And they, yeah, look at those ears. They have the biggest ears um, of a North American bat. So you can mm. just see how huge. If we had ears like that, they'd go out to, like, I don't know, like here. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It's really yeah. cute. It's got kind of like a red they face are. and a little white chin. Oh, my gosh. A very yep. cute bat. And they look like a cow. They're spotted. They have, like, black and white spots on their fur. So they kind of look like a cow, adorable. which is why they're called spotted bat. Yeah. Adorable. My favorite. <laughs> <sighs> the kitty's hog-nosed bat, also known as the bumblebee bat. because oh, it's, it's so tiny. Basically yeah. the size of a bumblebee. Oh, yeah. Goodness. They're about the size of your thumb. Oh. Look how tiny. And they weigh less than a penny. So they're, they're super, super tiny. It's the smallest bat in the world. Um, is it inappropriate I've never seen to have one. bats as a pet? We're Unfortunately, to, huh? yeah, we can't have Because I just saw that no. little bat, and I'm like, that is the cutest bat. I just want a little bat friend, little bat pet like that. But you're not supposed to have them, right? right? Yeah, uh, you're not, <sighs> unfortunately, able to. But you can go to a zoo and see them, and they're, they're pretty yeah. cool there. All right, yep. all right, fine. I won't get a bat. Next Aww. up. <laughs> oh, this is one of the flying fox species. This is a uh, Mariana flying fox. And I Look love flying that. foxes because... If we go from the other end of the spectrum, from the tiniest to the biggest, some of the flying foxes are the biggest bats in the world, about six-foot wingspan, from wingtip to wingtip. Are those the big ones that you see hanging upside down, like in Australia? They'll be, like, yes. hanging, and they just look so big. Oh, um, yep. one of our audience just asked, have you ever named a bat? I know um, you will someday. We, you could discover a bat. If yeah. anyone's going to discover a bat, it's you. I know. 
I would love to discover a bat because if you discover one, you get to name it. That'd be so cool. I know. Someday. So I haven't <laughs> named one yet. She's like, yeah. well, I named one Steve, but the scientific journals didn't pick up on that. So. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, nope, I don't think fly. <laughs> and that one, so these, no. you said they're wings, the, the wingspan here of the flying fox can get up to, did you, how many feet did you say? Up to six feet. So that's taller six than feet. I That's longer than six I am feet. tall. Bigger than me. Yep. Taller than me. Wow. Yep. Okay, fruit. next But they up. eat fruit. These ones eat fruit, so they're just yes. fruit eaters. <gasps> yes. Okay, we so this one. one, this is a southern bentwing bat in Australia. I actually studied these bats in Australia for a year. Okay. And you can see the the furry one and then the one that's yeah. naked. And yeah. that the one without fur is the baby. So Aww. the really cool thing, there's two really cool things about bat moms is uh -huh. that they only have usually one baby a year. So uh -huh. bats don't have litters. They don't have, you know, big multiple litters a year, mm -hmm. just one baby a year. And mm -hmm. that baby can be up to a third of the mom's body weight when it's born. Crazy. So that would be like us giving birth to a toddler, Goo. which is pretty is, insane. That's gnarly. And is that, um, are those a bunch of other babies around it though? Why are there a bunch of babies mm -hmm. around this one? Yeah, because they don't, the babies don't have fur. So that means they need to stay warm somehow. So if the if yeah. the moms put all the babies in a in a cluster, that helps keep them warm when the moms That's are cute. gone. That's cute. So they're just like go to nursery, go to bat nursery, it act, yeah. and and it's then called they, a nursery. Can, and then they can tell their babies apart, and they like go and pick them up later and stuff. Yep, they can tell. Adorable. They can find their little. That would baby. be a really cute cartoon yep. show. That is adorable. Oh, well, I love that. Thank you. For, I can't believe yeah. we've talked like a hundred times, and you've never shown me these bats. And every time we talk to you, there's always yeah. something new. Thank you so much. Those are awesome. Definitely. Um, and you were going to tell us about in order to research the bats, you need to be able to catch them, right? So yes, how do you do definitely. that and keep, keep them safe and all that? I have a little demo to show you. If you were um, mm -hmm. here a couple weeks ago, we showed the mist netting. Um, yes. So a mist net is basically how we catch bats. Um, so it's this kind of like gigantic hairnet. Like it looks like, yeah. you know, one of those hairnets that you Super wear. Super thin, yeah. Yeah. And the bats, when they're flying, they don't see the net in time. All bats have eyes and all bats can see. But, yeah. you know, they're flying really fast at night. So they basically fly into the net and then get tangled. And then yeah. we take them out and study them. So cool. Pretty harmless hey. for the bats. Yeah. And tell everybody watching how they can help bats. Yeah, so if you want to help bats, there's a few things you can do. Uh, one is you can put up a bat house. So it's basically like, yeah, building a home for a bat. And I do have some demos to show you. So let me grab those. Oh, look at her bat houses. That's that's literally your bat house, right? Those are flying yeah, out of so your this bat is... house there. Look at that video. Oh, yeah, the one on the video. You see all those yep. bats? Yeah, I built these. You're so cool. Yeah, that was in Texas. I built those bat houses in some pecan orchards in Texas. Yep. That's awesome. And here's one. Let's see. There we go. So you can see they're they're fairly large, um, but they have like these yeah. chambers inside where you yeah. can see the bats will actually go up in there and, and roost and sleep in there during the day. Um, yes. And they're pretty thin. So yeah, like you can put up a bat house. Yeah, and I talked to Kristen about this before, and there are bats in literally all 50 states in the union, and even if you live mm -hmm. in the city like I do in Los Angeles, you can still put up a bat house because there are bats mm -hmm. around. Yep. And you just don't yep. realize. And if you, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really everywhere. I mean, they're yeah. they're flying around all, all over the place. That's so um, crazy. The but B -B -B. If, you room, if you don't want to do that. Oh, I That's like that. Fried B -B. chicken called it a BB and B. That is hilarious. And the and uh, <laughs> there was a question before that, um, which was how much bat clothing do you own? How many items would you say? Do you know? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I've been studying bats like officially for like over ten years. Yeah, I've been interested in them since I was twelve. So I, I'm allowed yeah. to have a lot. I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've no, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what kind of bats do you find in your own bat houses? Ooh, so in the bat houses, that one that we played that clip of, uh, those yeah. were the Mexican free-tailed bats. So that was the fastest flyer cool. that we showed earlier. Um, they looked, like, it looked bats. like there were fifty bats coming out of that bat house. Oh, there were more. There were hundreds. These That's crazy. bats, I mean, they can roost like a hundred bats per square foot. So They're like snuggly. on a piece of paper. There they yep, go Yeah, there they come. Yeah. Oh. Dude, that's yep. so cool. 
But yeah, yeah there's lots beautiful. of different types of bats in bat houses. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And you can well, also awesome. plant a bat garden too. Oh, sorry. A bat garden? What is this like the stuff that yeah. they like to eat? Yep. If you plant nocturnal night blooming flowers, that will attract nocturnal insects oh. that our insectivorous bats can then eat. So it's like a little buffet oh. for the bats if you plant night flowers. I want to have yeah. a little a buffet at my B B and B. This is a great yeah, idea. Me too. Um, okay, Thank so you. it is time for the part of our show where we play our game entitled I Know Everything About. Um, everyone on our show <laughs> is an expert like you at something. Sometimes we give them something like directly in their field. Sometimes we ask them what else they're interested in other than their main subject. And we asked you, and I know that you answered Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So what? our game oh. is a, a, called I Know Everything About Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And look at that. You need to get Heck that printed. Yeah. We need to send that to Kristen oh so that God. she can get That's that awesome. graphic framed. Also, <laughs> I need to be... Somebody needs to do that for me, too. But no big deal. Later, later, later. It's Kristen's time. It's Kristen's time right now. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? I'm going to ask you 10 trivia questions about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and we'll see if you okay. can slay this quiz. Oh, do I hope so. <laughs> I just started watching it again. It holds up. Yeah. yeah, it really does. I, I haven't watched it in years, so we'll see how yeah. well I do. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you haven't. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Who says this line? We're going to destroy the world. Want to come? Drusilla. That's right. She's an evil vampire. She's I'm glad so you did the evil. accent. That was good. Uh, uh, she's such, yeah. got such a funny accent. It always cracks. She's always like, Spike. And she's just like the most evil person ever. Yes. But she's got that that funny accent. Okay. Um, yep. On season two, episode six, the gang dresses up in costumes and for Halloween. And then they become the costume that they're wearing. So the question is, what does Willow become? She becomes a ghost. That's right. She on. Yeah. That's right. And she yeah. disappears. That's a great episode of television. Buffy I love has, it. I know, so good. Next question. Buffy has two vampire boyfriends. One was Angel. Who was the other? Spike. Spike. I mean, and actually, are... I, <laughs> I have a succulent plant that I named Spike because it's Spike. <laughs> But from Buffy. <laughs> Classic. Um, all right, next up. Giles is the school librarian. What is the name of his secret identity? Like, what's his secret occupation, I should have said? Oh, his secret occupation would be Watcher, right? Watcher? The Watcher. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Um, who played Ted, Buffy's mom's crazy robot boyfriend? This is a tough one. Oh, I don't even, I don't know the actor's name. I, I know what you he don't? looks like. Does no, anybody I'm bad out with there know? He was in. He was Banson? in his company. No, no. he was. In I, I don't know his rules, name. Ten rules for dating my daughter or whatever. Hmm. Anyway, I just gonna I, have to I, say I don't know on that one. A, no, all right, that's okay. That's okay. It, that's John Ritter is his name. Ah, is it familiar? No, I know John Ritter. Is. Oh yeah, now definitely. You know who John Ritter is. Okay, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, here we go. What's the name of the demon gateway that Sunnydale High is built on top of? The Hellmouth. Correct. Next up, what? Why did Buffy get kicked out of her? <laughs> why did Buffy get kicked out of her school in Los Angeles? I think I think it was setting the gymnasium on fire. Correct. She burnt down the gym. And I love that. Like in the very first episode, she goes to meet her principal and he's like, so you got kicked out of your last school for burning down the gym. And she goes, yeah, well, it was filled with vamp, vamp asbestos. Off. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's filled too. with asbestos. Um, <laughs> what involving special powers does Willow become over the course of the series? She becomes a witch. She does become a witch and it's really cool. She's, she's cool. Um, She's super cool. What does Buffy favorite. drop? She, it, I can see that. I could see that. You'd be a Willow fan. What does Buffy mm -hmm. drop out of her backpack that Xander picks up on her first day of school? Her, um, her steak. Yeah, it's a steak. Right? He's like, you dropped your yeah. uh, steak. Mr. Pointy, um, I believe his name is. <laughs> Mr. Pointy, as she calls him. Yes. Um, who says this line? Look, Buffy, you may be hot stuff when it comes to demonology or whatever, but when it comes to dating, I'm the slayer. 
Oh gosh, is that is it Cordelia? Yes, it's Cordelia. Yeah. Well done, well done. Yeah. You got nine out of ten. Very well done. Yay! Yay! Um, there cool. actually what is one question that I wanted to read from our audience here um, that cool. says, "I've always been terrified about getting bitten by a bat and getting rabies. Do bats actually carry any diseases we should worry about?" So they can carry rabies just like any, any mammal, um, you know, raccoons and foxes are also carriers, but usually yeah. with bats, um, bats kind of tend to fly away. They don't, we don't find them a lot when they're sick. Um, but if you do find a bat on the ground, you know, don't touch it cause it could be sick or it could be hurt. Um, but yeah, just kind of stay away and they, they won't attack you or anything like that. So don't Good be question. scored. Um, mm -hmm. and bats don't carry rabies at any higher rate than any other wild animal. Okay, no. perfect. Nope. I just wanted to answer that because I don't want people to be scared, especially those cute little bats. No. Oh my gosh, that yellow one catching a fish just really caught my fancy. <laughs> um, <Yep>. well, thank <laughs> They're you. my favorite. <laughs> They're so cute. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening and everyone needs to follow Kristen on social. Here are her handles. Bats for life underscore Kristen and at bats for life. Perfect. Perfect. That makes sense. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Kristen. And we'll see you next time. Hopefully very soon. Thank you, everyone. Wait, you don't follow CBS Unstoppable on YouTube? How will you know when new videos drop? You better go subscribe before you miss a crazy stim moment. Like me walking a shark or making a black hole in my backyard.